Tenekoto, no mai, hai mai. Hello everyone, welcome to the Walk in the Shadowlands podcast. Let me be your guide as we take a walk into the realms of the unexplained, of the paranormal, of things that go bump in the night and haunt your dreams. Your host... I'm Marianne. Thanks so much for joining me today, tonight, whatever time it is, wherever you're living in this beautiful world of ours. Sit back, relax, let me be your guide as we walk into the Shadowlands together and see what awaits us there. Kia hello everyone, welcome back to the first episode of Season 8 and thanks so much for joining us today, a special welcome to all new listeners. For those who are familiar with my voice, you may notice in this episode and our next one in the intros to the interviews and the summing up that I sound a wee bit different. That's because I'm currently a tad ill with a chest infection. So apologies for the raspy, breathless voice, but as the saying goes, the show must go on. I always do my interviews separately to the intros and exits due to a number of reasons, and I try to have at least a couple of episodes done before the season restarts, so by the time our third episode rolls around, I should be well and truly over the spot. I want to introduce you to my special guest this episode. I was at my computer a few weeks back editing an interview, actually, when I got notification of an email. I opened it and it was from my guest publicist, asking if I'd be interested in having her on my podcast. I actually wasn't too sure because I usually don't promote mediums as a general rule. I think I had one in my first season and decided after that not to unless I felt certain they were the real deal. There are a number of reasons for that, and this person I've actually seen on a TV show that I've followed since that show began, called The Ghost Adventures. Now, you may have heard of that show, if you follow the paranormal. Just to be open and honest with you all, I follow these chaps more because they actually make me laugh than any other reason. But my guest is a regular on their show, and despite knowing how these shows work behind the scenes, having been on one myself, along with my paranormal investigation team a few years back, I was very impressed with her when I first saw her on their show. So I actually went to the patrons of my show and asked them for their opinion. It was a unanimous, let's have her on. So now, let me tell you about her. My guest enjoys working her magic on ghost adventures and their spin-off Deadly Possessions on the Travel Channel. Jeff Lewis's Flipping Out, some magical cooking on Master Chef with Gordon Ramsay, conjuring up a few dead celebrities on Private Chefs of Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills Porn and several episodes of Pit Boss and an upcoming Bad Girls Club. She was brought in as a paranormal expert on ghostly lovers, candidly Nicole, mansion hunters, Beverly Hills Porn and dozens more. She's even gotten into the home makeover world on mobile home disaster in addition to being a host of Psychic Scone Wild on Block Talk Radio and has been heard on national syndicated radio with Adam Carolla, Jason Ellis and Manco Mueller. I hope I pronounced those names right. As a performer, my guest has enjoyed numerous stage, film and television roles and has had the honour of working with Martin Sheen, Burt Reynolds, Jean Voigt and Emma Stone, to name a few. As a producer, Paddy owns Brain Brew Entertainment. Oh, try and say that fast, a theatrical production company that specialises in live entertainment. Her working style is magical, loving 
and upbeat, which creates a positive, safe and fun environment for you to learn, grow and heal. She's been practicing natural magic her entire life. Her speciality is in adjusting energy and flow in people, spaces, situations, most anything. She works organically by creating spells and rituals that arrange natural elements to the rhythms and cycles of the universe to bring about healing, change our lives for the better and create balance. She is also the President and Chief Examiner of the American Federation of Certified Psychics and Mediums. She is very happily married to the fabulous drama Kerry Crutchfield and proud mum to her beautiful new puppy Willow. I'd like to welcome my special guest, Patty Negri. Welcome to the Walk in the Shadowlands podcast from here in little old New Zealand. <laughs> well, greetings from Hollywood. I am thrilled to be there in little old New Zealand from little old Hollywood, California. Um, and you sound pretty good for being so far away. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, eh? uh, Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you. Oh, I was actually really quite thrilled when your publicist reached out to me. Uh, as I said, I don't normally have people who are psychics or mediums on, mainly because I don't know how genuine they are. But I've seen you in action, and as soon as I saw you, I knew that you were the real deal. You know, I could feel it. For those listeners who don't know, Patty has uh, appeared on a number of television shows, and the show that I'm referring to that I saw her on was Ghost Adventures. Yeah, that's the one I've been. That's the one everybody watches. I do a lot of shows, but I, I do Ghost Adventures a lot. And I've been doing it for six years now. My first show with Zach and the guys was 2015. Wow. I just had a new one air last week. So, you know, a few times a season when they figure they need me, it's great. I never know what I'm getting into. It's always an adventure. Well, maybe... And, uh, Sorry, sorry, Patty, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Maybe we could talk about that briefly and then go on to other aspects of what you do because it's only a small portion of what you do, but it's probably what you're better known for at the Yeah, no, we can go anywhere you want, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet. Okay, well, well, actually, let's do this. Let's start at the beginning. So tell us how you got into working professionally with your abilities? 
Um, by fluke, absolute accident. I mean, I've always been gifted. I, mm. I've been talking to the other side since I was, since I could talk, since I was a little kid, three, right. four feet old. I just knew that the so-called imaginary friends weren't imaginary. They were real beings and spirits I could talk to and communicate with. I was always had this actually very sweet obsession with the other side, with the dead, never in a darker, morbid way, though. Right. I just wanted to talk to them. They were there. So I did my first seance at seven or eight. And so I've always been on this path. I've always communicated with nature and animals and spirits and very right. elemental in my work. So I found a path that worked with that, a nice pagan path. But I kept it very separate. I, I never lied about things, but I, I had a production company that was very corporate. Um, I, and I produced shows, but for like big banks and Microsoft right. and these people, it's like, oh my, if these people knew that I, you know, danced around bonfires in a cloak <laughs> and talked to dead people, they wouldn't have me for their HR department, you know, annual, whatever motivational training. Right. So I kept really separate until about 2008 when the big corporate crash came the big stock market crash and corporate entertainment became a dirty word right. um, i'm producing these big shows and again number one the companies are losing money they can't put on do this would be the most the first thing to go they take care of their employees and at the same time there was big executives getting in trouble for misusing corporate entertainment for flying around the world and doing naughty things right. which is not what we did so all of a sudden that just kind of crashed and at the same time reality tv was just going up and up and up it's been around for a while but it was just but I got a call from somebody who knew my ability with mediumship and raising the veil and with seances. Right. And they had a TV show and they said, we really need you to do a seance on this TV show. I'm like, no, I can't do that. I keep that side of myself uh, very separate from the public eye because of my work. I, I really can't. Oh, please, please. We need your ability. And we know you're legit, just like you said. And we need this thing. No, no, I really can't. And, and then I look at my calendar and I don't have any shows. I don't have any jobs. I'm like, oh, with this, am I being silly? And I go, well, what's the name of the show? And he goes, it's called Mobile Home Disaster. And it's on country music television. And I'm like, well, nobody's going to watch that show. <laughs> nobody's going to watch that. So I'll, I'll do it. Okay. I'll do it. You know, it's it. So I went and I fell in love with the genre. I get to do my work, my most passionate work. I actually was helping a human little girl because she did have a portal in her mobile home right. and there was a spirit and, and saw that she was will. I was able to help her. I, I had I got to have three cameras following me around. And again, I have that background. I bet mm -hmm. I didn't have to memorize lines. I got to be me, do my work on a yeah. bigger stage. I'm like, this is so much fun, but never again. This I can't do this because this is the separate side of me. Mm -hmm. So again, it was fun. It was great. I love it. No. And then, so it aired. And then of I'm thinking nothing of it. Nobody watches who would watch a show called Mobile Home Disaster on yeah. country music? Not anybody, even of my corporate clients, not that anybody wouldn't, that that's a bad thing, but my world, my Hollywood world, my corporate world, I didn't think they were going to watch that. The very next day, I get a call from my biggest corporate client and she's like, at a big national, like I think bank I worked for. And I'm like, hi, Patty, I saw you on TV last night. And I'm like, <laughs> nice. oh, yeah. oh, and she's like, I didn't know you were into the paranormal. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And my voice gets higher and higher. <laughs> and she goes, oh, I love the paranormal. I have been into it forever. I didn't know you could speak to spirits. I'm like, yeah, I go. And we had the most real personal conversation we had ever had. And I'm like, what am I doing? I am out of the broom closet. I'm out of the psychic closet. This is who I am. I don't right. do anything bad or negative or anything that anybody shouldn't like. So I just, that's it. So again, even though I still have my production company, that just took such a, I don't even have time for that, even when it picked up, but the other went this way, because again, I do know television. I am legit and good at what I do. I have all the background that's just like, well, just call Patty. <laughs> You know, if you need the you need a psychic, call Patty. You need yeah. a medium, call Patty. You need a witch, call Patty. You need a seance. Get. So it's fun. It's great. Um, oh, awesome. So that set you on that path. And from there, were you approached by other companies? Like, how did you get onto Ghost Adventures? 
Ghost Adventures was a, almost a fluke. I guess probably they'd heard about me again because I've been around a long time. Right. Um, but they were doing uh, the my first time there. I was really supposed to be. You know how every show, you know the show that they mm-hmm. have one mm-hmm. local person either who has experienced something or even the local psychic who right. we did or the investigator there. So it was right in my hometown. I live in the middle of Hollywood. It was at, at the, it was a haunted in Hollywood um, episode, and they were at the American Legion Hall. And for some reason, I think the person who worked there, who managed the place, said, um, I had done a fundraiser there. I'm on the executive board of the Hollywood Arts Council. We support the arts in Hollywood. We bring art into all the schools and the elementary schools because art makes your math better. You know, Mm -hmm. people are just getting it. It's like, um, so I had done a fundraiser there. I'd done a spirit salon. My husband's jazz band played. I did sweet little ghost tours, not even like paranormal things. But while I was there, I'm like, oh my God, I'm talking to Charlie Chaplin. I, I'm like, and I said where he was and all this stuff in a not spooky atmosphere, this kind of an elegant, everybody dressed up old Hollywood way. Right. And Zach had heard that, I, I had talked to Charlie Chaplin. So he called me in like he would whoever in the neighborhood who'd been to the thing. And then I guess I pointed out the the exact, unbeknownst to me, the exact chair he sat at where the manager of the club or the owner of the club said, oh, yes, this is where he sat every Friday. And so Zach's like, oh, my God, she really knows. And I said how he was swirling his drink. And hey. um, so, again, I thought that would be the end of it. But then all of a sudden they start calling me if they need a seance or they need it through the veil or also to just kind of um, tell what's going on, almost give a confirmation how they have the equipment. Because honestly, I never know where I'm going Mm -hmm. Um, on the times that I've sent them a place. That's the times I really don't go in and do things because I know it like uh, Reseda house. I I lead them there. Pasadena house. I lead them there. You know, even with Holly's house, I said what I experienced. I don't because I've done it. But but other ones, it's like, here is this address and you show up here and here's you get in the airplane and you fly here. Once this one in Scottsdale, it's like. Okay. Usually they'll have a production assistant pick you up, but they're like, we're so used to doing, we rented you a car and just drive out. <laughs> I'm like, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I go, can I have an address? I, I'm not that good of a psychic, really. I, I need a physical address. It's a big place, Arizona. And so, so they did. Um, but like even the Cecil Hotel, which was a big, Ooh. scary, famous place. Yes. He, had called, he had called me. A couple of weeks before, he he said, Patty, we're going to be in L.A. and I, I'm going to call you. I'm going to need you for something. I, OK, great. I always love it because it's always an adventure. Didn't hear anything. That's normal. And then then I get a call in the afternoon. He's like, uh, we're downtown L.A. Can you be here in two hours? He gave me I think he mumbled an address. It didn't if he said the Cecil, I don't remember it. But right. I'm thinking two hours. I was at my brother's house, you know, about 30 miles away. And I'm like, I'm a girl. I'm like. Did I wash my hair today? Do I have time to put on makeup? I'm not thinking, <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I could be there. And I'm rushing to get home. <laughs> and it's downtown. It's Skid Row. And I and I I see the sign like, ooh, Cecil Hotel. That's the place with the girl in the water tower. Mm. It, it, I mean, that made worldwide press, the girl pushing elevator yeah. buttons. That's all I knew. I didn't know the rest of the history. I'd never looked into it. But. I'm walking up through Skid Row and I feel the energy. First, this this rat wouldn't let me in. And it's it's it, there's lots of rats. I'm not even afraid of rats, but I would go rat right and the rat would go right. The, I'd go left, the rat. So we're dancing. We're going right and left. Oh. <laughs> this rat, I'm going, wow, either the rat's possessed and keeping, or maybe the rat's protecting me. I don't know, but you have to move, rat. I have to be there. Yeah. So I got past the rat. Um, and I walk in and this building is just kind of bombarding in on me so strongly. And I start going into trance state right away because that's what I do Mm. for things like that. I know what I'm doing. So this is a, don't do this at home. And then all of a sudden up, they jump Zach and the whole crew and they've got their cameras strapped on already. And he's going, okay, Patty, there's, and I'm like, ah, and he goes, there's 14 floors. There's 700 rooms. You tell us where to go. Uh, same thing. <laughs> and I go to the elevator. I'm like, oh, this is that elevator. And I told him what button to push. I don't even remember what it was. I'm in trance state. And I led him to a room, one of the 700 rooms. 
and I and I walk into a room and I, I kind of get this little girl voice when I'm in trance state and I'm walking over the window and I'm not thinking anything. And I'm, I got to get out of here and I'm just opening the window and I'm not thinking. And all of a sudden, Zach starts yelling at me and the part of me that's still conscious, Patty, I keep this sex yeah. with it. And I'm like, why is he yelling at me? Zach's never yelled at me before. I just got to open the window. I've got to get out. And I'm just uh-huh. not thinking anything and he's like sit down sit down and I'm like he's never yelled at me so he almost forced me to sit down and I sit down and then on their SLS camera they have the dancing green person sitting on me and I unbeknownst to me had led them to a room that somebody had jumped out that very window and I guess he just thought I was going to jump out from this I was like channeling this person who had to get out of there um that oh. place is crazy. So, so then I'm like, okay, we left the room and then I led him to another room. And then all of a sudden I feel like I'm being attacked. I'm, I'm holding myself. I look like a little kid and I'm like, Oh, don't go there. Don't go there. And I'm, I'm in panic um, again, tra- channeling through. Yeah. I knew I'm okay. And again, and, and Zach's going, what's happening? Where are you being attacked? And the part of me that's still Patty going, you're on television, you're conscious. I'm like, how do you say that body part on television? Oh. And I'm like, uh, lady parts or whatever I said, female, female. I had led them to a room where this poor woman had been raped right. and murdered. Mm. In that, room. that place is crazy. Oh, crazy. Yeah. We had all sorts of other things. Those are the just two that made it on the episode because, you know, they film more than they need. Yes, but yes, I, I, I've been back there recently with a new crew I'm working with on YouTube. They're called TFIL. And again, just as crazy, my channeling on that one, um, I allowed somebody, to, and it's like, a, you know, a lot of drug addicts and all that kind of stuff. And I was channeling one of those. So the the part of me that was still patty was was thinking I was talking, but I was talking and saying stuff and I was rocking back and forth, kind of hitting my head. The poor guys put their head behind, hand behind my head, think I was going to give myself a concussion, but I thought I was talking but what they heard was this weird gibberish. Blah, 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 was weird gibberish. Uh-huh. I didn't know that. But one of the guys, and he's really intuitive. He's an intuitive one on their thing. Really, he's he's um, he's like, you need to play that backwards. They played it backwards, and I was speaking English. Oh. That still gives me goosebumps because I. That is a weird. Yeah, they played it from me going blah, 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 whatever. And thinking like an idiot, it said, it, whatever it said, help me. I'm so sorry. I've got to do whatever. I was, it was, it was English backwards. That's really crazy. Yeah. I know. Hotel kids. Yeah, downtown LA. I know. And I've been to a lot of crazy places, but whoa. With the Cecil Hotel, Patty, I got the impression that there was an a land elemental there that was causing the issues. That is a huge part of it. Mm. Yes, it, it comes from the land, mm. up from the ground. Mm. There is elemental. And from that, I think some kind of an egregore has been created or mm. something mm. definitive from, from the ground. I just, because downtown LA and a lot of cities are, you know, Skid Row on the same block is a fancy, expensive apartment and what it yeah. is. I just did a clearing literally across the street from a Cecil on a fancy, expensive doorman apartment. But she was getting this kind of coming up from the ground thing uh-huh. in a beautiful old building. So I had to put so many more extra protections around all this stuff. Yeah. But you nailed it. It's in the ground. Yeah. Like if they knock that building down, there'd still be a there thing. Be a and, then, and whatever it is, it's so strong now again, combination from under the ground, something self-created. It both affects living people there, makes them jump out windows, overdose yeah. on drugs, kill people, two serial killers there. Yeah. And it's also holding the spirit world in. There's spirits that are stuck there, like yeah. uh, at least a lamb and stuff. So it's bad. That's, it's but it's really great to go if you if you if you're into that sort of thing. That's actually the impression that I that I got so thank you for validating that for me because somebody was asking me about it once and I said well look I actually think it's this 
and yeah. it's causing the behaviors in these people. It's affecting their behaviors. You Emotions. feel it. You would feel it the second you walk in. Yeah. Every, I mean, people do. People who don't think that they have any gifts or yeah. powers or awareness or spirituality or belief system would go. Uh, this place is weird. You know, you feel it in your body. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's really interesting. So what do you think was your most memorable experience when working with the Ghost Adventures team to date? Um, that was pretty interesting. I think I, I, I think the heavy one, one of the heaviest, well, I've been a lot of heavy different places, yeah. but the Black Dahlia House uh-huh. really, really because I allowed him to channel through me and he was evil. Mm-hmm. The doctor who accused doing it, who did it? He told me he, he did, did it. it. Yeah. Did it. Yeah. Even his son who was LAPD knows he did it. He did it. But, but again, it'll remain an unsolved, but he is an evil, evil one and still there. And he is holding some of the girls and he killed lots of girls, not just the black gal, mm-hmm. not just Elizabeth mm-hmm. short, you know, just a lot of them were like little runaways and yeah. ladies in the evening that just didn't count so much, unfortunately. Yeah. So that place was really, really charged. Um, and the couple of times that I've, I've filmed in Zach's museum when the people are out, ah, you know, I did, I did the Peggy the doll seance, which was kind of crazy because she's a haunted little thing. Yeah. And then two yeah. Halloween specials where, um, yeah, it's crazy too. I saw these, oh, you're interesting. <laughs> Even though he keeps it in check. I mean, people experience stuff all the time. He's got the best haunted collection of anybody and it's beautifully curated and there's the right amount of protections. But, you know, when the guests go away, we get to throw out all that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because, of course, they've got health and safety things over there that I have to be aware of, I guess. Yeah, the yeah. On, a, on, a, you know, on a spiritual level, on a magical level. Yeah, absolutely. Wow, that's really cool. And you've been into some really interesting, interesting things, ghost adventures aside. I understand that you did an interview where you talked about ghost sex. Yes. Let's get into that a little bit. All right. Spectrophilia is the t- a technical name. Um, I'm, I'm actually weirdly considered an expert, an international expert in spectrophilia. But, you know, when the, when the, when the field of experts is two people, it's a big, <laughs> it doesn't take a long time to get to the top. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm the best in the world. I'm the only one. No, um, <laughs> it's funny. But yes, because I started having clients. It is a real thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, humans have been having uh, relations with spirits as long as people. I mean, it's written about in books, Yeah, you know, even almost like the humanly creed, the human and the the heavenly creature, good or bad or indifferent. That's Mm -hmm. every story, every religion. Um, But what gets the press is the bad side, the incubus, Mm -hmm. the succubus, the the demon Mm -hmm. who comes and all that. And yes, that does exist. But so does the good side of it. Just just like human to human mm-hmm. sex, there's good and there's bad. There's consensual and non-consensual. There's, um, and, but in our modern world, and I'm sure your country is the same as ours, our modern Western non-mystical world, ghosts and spirits are weird enough to talk about, bad enough in, in the real mundane yes. world. Yeah. Add sex on top because we can't talk about sex either. <laughs> yeah. And then if you're going to combine ghosts and sex, you just don't talk about that. You know, the people will put you away and think you're crazy. How do you talk to your, even your therapist or your yeah. boss or your teacher or your family? So what's sad is that there's people who are experiencing it. Absolutely. That think- they're going crazy and they think they're mm. possessed and they think they're of the devil. And mm. none of that is true. It's something that's gone on forever. Mm. So be, to be able to talk about it is that you can get help. You can, there's still, everything is under our control. So if it's the bad kind going on. You have to know how to stop it. And you can, this is our realm of existence. Exactly. People just don't know that. So they give away their power and they get, fearful exactly yeah that's what i tell people people. feed the negative or angry which will feed the negative no be like a parent or a teacher nope you're not welcome here that's what i tell them use your mom voice when you're speaking to them use your mom voice i'm going to say that mom voice that is really good because i say like you're a parent or teacher yeah with 
with a complete authority, even some love behind it. Yeah. No fear and no anger. And guess what? They go away. Yeah. But they want you to get mad. They want you to get scared. So oh, yeah. again, if you're having the negative side of it, I give you ways to get rid of it. And if you're having the positive side of it, again, you could think you're not evil or bad. And I still teach people it's real. it can be good for the short term, like my best friend whose husband died young and it was closure. Yeah. You know, if people don't get it, if, if you don't believe in ghosts, you don't believe in ghosts. But if yeah. you believe in spirit, in the spirit world, why would you think? And so many people experience, yes, my grandma came to me or my parents came to me mm-hmm. and they held my hand or were there at the end of the bed. So if you believe a spirit can do that, why would you think your spouse of 50 years or your lover, that's off limits now? It's yeah. again, that's our weird Western prudish ridiculousness. Oh, absolutely. So, Mm. So my best friend had experienced it. So I started studying it for all this stuff. So it's like, oh, I need to know. So now people come to me. But again, still the crazy stuff gets all the press. Like there's a woman in the UK who, you know, gave up men for ghosts. Oh, and, yeah. and she's engaged yeah, to a yeah, ghost. Yeah, yeah. Married to and the car. You have a ghost baby. It's like, and she's the one getting the press. No, you're not going to have a ghost baby. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. but that's okay. So long as the good stuff gets out there did you know she divorced him <laughs> did she divorce a girl? oh see i have not kept up on my ghost again. i actually did an episode on incubus and succubi a succubus uh-huh. and i covered her story and apparently because it, it was all over the press here in new zealand as well and apparently she was starting to get she found she was starting to get really ill after sexual encounters with him to the point where her health was seriously declining and finally she woke up and realized hey this is not a good thing and she had an exorcism done okay all right so whatever that's dramatic but she's going obviously less in the grammatic and that's good but again and even when it's the good side of things it's often for closure of a relationship or occasionally i've had it that Maybe somebody, often women, um, but it could be a man too. Mm. They've lost their their sense of themselves. They've even lost their sense of sensuality. Yeah. And they're afraid of intimacy with living people. A few times I've had where this beautiful spirit level, positive, good, will come yeah. to them, reawaken their sexuality and go, oh, yeah, this is a good thing. But then I still work with that. It's still geographically undesirable. Short term, mm. then move on to to humans because yeah. again it is different realms of existence yeah so absolutely. You know, it can have a place for short term but it is going to take your energy because it's like you have to go to a different planet a different realm to deal with it yeah you can't take you out to dinner you can't take them home for the holidays you know yeah and i've always like you know very often people can feel loved ones touch them to comfort them so yeah. this is no different no different. No different. No different. And I do hear, I've never had it myself, but I hear the experience is fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> is it no, no limitation of just the physical body? It's. Yeah. <laughs> it touches all the buttons. <laughs> it touches all the buttons. Oh, that's crazy. Oh. Yeah. So the people I spoke to about it were ones that had more traumatic experiences. Yeah. And that's probably what you hear about more than, you know, positive experiences. Yes. Yes. Again, and that's what we're going to hear about um, on in and life, you, the yeah. bad guys versus the good guys. Yeah. Not somebody did a good deed today and carried yeah. the groceries and so and so. And I felt <laughs> really badly for them because they're no different to a, a rape victim of a living person they still go through all the same feelings of violation of lack of control of you know everything that a a regular rape victim goes to but who believes them you know who can they turn to because yeah yeah it's bad yeah again that thing that everything is taboo everything rape is taboo yeah yeah all of it so it's hard enough for regular yeah so that's why it's good i did a movie for travel channel called ghostly lovers where i was part of it i was one of the experts um and it was beautifully done almost kind of like you know a hallmark family movie but with subject matter but it was all of the good side right i think they played it once (laughs) oh because it wasn't wasn't dramatic enough yeah well what maybe it was it 
Maybe it wasn't dramatic enough or it's still just a weird subject. Yeah. Yeah. Or both. Probably both. Probably both. It was too yeah. nice. It wasn't dramatic enough and it was still too weird yeah. of a subject. I keep, uh-huh. I keep hearing a man's voice come through. Huh. Just like a deep. I don't hear. Anybody. What you, I don't hear what I you're have saying. A, so talk to us, please. Um, I, I have, I have. My doll Belle, but that's a female little girl spirit. I have a, a French artist hangs around at my house, Adrian. It used to be her house. Um, but I don't know who the man would be. Maybe he's with you. Um, <laughs> nobody I know. It's a deep voice. I just keep hearing it and I keep thinking, oh, is that my interference? Oh, oh, if it if he talks, I'll pick it up when I'm going through the because I often get EVPs when I'm doing yeah you know, these recordings quite often, actually. Have you had much experience with animal spirits in your channel? Yes, I have. Um, yes, I'm working with familiars and animal spirits, both um, both the familiars like your pet dog, your yeah. pet cat familiars, and in more like your totem spirit animal working with. I actually do a lot we actually did a a hunt ritual last night where i was working with wolf energy and wolf power and things like that it was beautiful um so yeah i and and i also work to me in the way i teach the way i see there's three different kinds of familiars there's the dog cat real pet one yeah there's the the totem spirit animal type like i'm bear i am crow i am owl and then there's the created one which are the spirits like working with dragon energy working with whatever ah. the where, where you're creating your own spirit which we create spirits all the time right. so i work with all three yeah how about you <laughs> i was meaning sorry i was meaning more of of like animal spirits as in seeing them like pets oh. people's yeah pets. yeah Yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Honestly, when I do um, my seances again, it, they used to be, you know, around my dining room table, then they become zoom with this or, or now, you know, I'm a, you know, 400 people in an auditorium next week, I'm going to be at Michigan Paracon. And it's a theater that holds oh, like yeah. 1500. And I'm thinking that's a lot of dead people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everybody brings with them, but no, some of the first ones to come are animal spirits. They love us. They love us. Nothing mm. dies. Science has proven that because I'm always like, who's got the fluffy white poodle with the purple polka dot collar or the this or the that and like a big yellow white, whatever that is. And it's somebody like, oh, that's puffy from whatever. I just died last year or I had when I was a kid. They hang out and people see them. You see them when you least expect it. Like maybe you're watching TV or you're at your computer or you're dining and you feel something just like that mm-hmm. corner of your eye or brushing by your feet that feels like a tail, like your cat's tail or something getting on the bed. You hear yeah. all the time, just like my puppy sounded. But they are the first to come to my seances. Once again, this is a test of faith thing. I was in my dining room table doing a seance, you know, before the lockdown. And in walked a giraffe and I'm like, and it wasn't like a spirit totem animal. It was like a pet giraffe. It was kind of indicating to me, they don't speak English. It was a a pet giraffe. And, and the part of me wanted to go, you can't say that. That doesn't make sense. But (laughs) you can't go in that logical brain because that shuts everything down. And I went, uh, okay, did somebody have a pet giraffe? And somebody did. They had grown up like in Africa or something on this compound. And so that was just took a lot of just trust on my part yeah. to go there. But yeah, even giraffes. It was awesome. I had an experience. I don't know if I told you when we first talked, but I was interviewing a chap who runs one of Chicago's, runs Chicago's largest secondhand dealership. And he wrote a really funny, funny book called Selling Dead People's Things. And yeah, he's really a lot you he'd be a good guest for you actually on your on your show. He, really? Yeah, he's so funny. Anyway, we he had the screen behind him, which was an art deco screen, and there was a gap between the screen and the floor, and I could see it. And I and we'd just about finished the interview. And as we were just finishing, I saw this fluffy, fawny colored dog wagging its tail going past me. I said, Oh, you've got a dog. And he said, no and I said but I just saw a dog and he said I don't have a dog and I said 
did you have a dog? And he said, yes. Was it tan colored? Yes. Oh, that's snookums. And I, I've never visually seen one like that before. And it was and it was on audio. Um, so he he specifically asked me to keep that in the interview because it was such a a touching validation for him that this beloved pet was still around him. Yeah, it is. It is. They're just love. Pets are just love. And yeah, they, yeah that is so sweet. Yeah. Still, and the, I believe, again, more and more stuff is going to be seen and felt and heard and tasted because the veil is thinning. Yeah, oh, you just read my mind. Literally yeah. read my mind. I was just going to say to you, have you noticed how the, the veils are thinning, buckling and tearing in places? Yep. Yep, completely. And, you know, it could be a lot of reasons. And I think one of them is the age of Aquarius thing. It's a different world. Mm -hmm. It is not the earth-based black and white, right and wrong, solid ground of our parents, parents, grandparents. It's it's becoming air and different and the veil is thinning, Mm -hmm. you know, and there's this planet's going through so much shift. Humanity is so much shift Mm -hmm. more and more unexplainable to the old fashioned belief system that left brain by. But I also think at the same time, science and spirituality are coming together so much getting into the quantum sciences and quite, it's like math, everything's coming down to numbers and math. So whether you use, Religious words or spirituality words or old pagan words or science words, it's all coming together. Yeah, isn't it exciting? It's actually, it I actually think it's a very exciting time to be living in to see this. I, I come from like a different perspective, even though I'm a clairvoyant medium. My work since I was about three years old has been the star people. Really? Yeah, See, yeah. I, that is not my world. Yeah, I want yeah. to talk to you. So you, since you, did you, were you communicating with them when you were a little bit kid? Like True. I was with just yeah. regular old ghosts. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've had a, a face-to-face encounters my entire life. And they taught me, I would see myself in, in ships and a learning situation where they'd be teaching me things. And one of the things that they taught me very strongly was about the power of intent, which is something that you use a lot in in pagan beliefs and rituals. Is that correct? Yeah. I have a question for you. Again, this is not my area of expertise. One of my mentors, it was Maximilian de Lafayette, but I don't. But it seems to me that star people, whatever you want to call them, and like regular ghosts or elementals or things on this earth don't come to the same at the same time. Like they won't come to the same seance. Oh, really? No. Maybe it's because it is different dimensions or yeah. something like that. A different vibrational rate. Yeah. yeah. Whereas elementals belong on this reality. And I, I always explain to people because this is how my star people explained it to me, is that this planet is like, think of like an onion with Earth being the core and every layer of the onion is a different dimension of being, but still attached to this reality. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I'll borrow it, give you full credit. (laughs) (laughs) You can use it. (laughs) Uh, and, well, and, onion. Yeah, I thought. Of- <laughs> and the veil between the dimensions is that little membrane that separates each layer. Yes, yes, and it is. It's tearing and thinning and yeah, peak holes and. But well, maybe they will come to the same seance one of these days. Uh, well, probably not, because what's the point? You know what? What is their purpose? They're not here for dog and pony shows. You know what I mean? That is true. That is true. That's why I'm very, very careful. Yeah. Even in the work that I have, the TV, you don't want it to be a dog. There, it, and number one, it has to be with respect. Yes, absolutely. I've literally known people just on the ghosty world. It's like, I'm worried. I think these ghosts are being abused. You know, you want to call yeah. them like social services. It's like, okay, you have a haunted house. Stop it. You know, <laughs> Because you're screaming at them and all that old school they used to do. And it's like, really? Yeah. This is ghost abuse. Stop it. <laughs> Actually, you know, that's a good way of looking at it. Like I always say to people, you treat them with respect. They're just humans without physical bodies. They're the same beings. Would you speak to a living person the way you're talking to 
to that. Like I, I have a paranormal investigation team, although New Zealand is so small and we've got such little places, you know, and funds and stuff that, you know, there's not a lot of places to investigate here and, you know, like um, larger places apart from private homes. And I always, one of the things I've always insisted on is respect when we go into a place we introduce ourselves i introduce the team i say who we are and why we're there and that we mean no disrespect and we treat them with respect never antagonize either yeah you can't you you, would you like to be treated like that and i get so angry patty like we've got this place here in napier which was an old prison it used to be a psychiatric hospital Oh, first it used to be an army barrack during the Maori Wars, Maori Land Wars here in New Zealand. Then it was a psych hospital and now it's a prison. And so it's, you know, quite a heavy site. And they, some groups have tours that go through it and I hate that. I, I, I refuse, I will never take my team there because these beings that are still trapped there for whatever reason, they're not there to be on display like zoo animals. In fact, animals shouldn't be in zoos, but that's another story. <laughs> that's that's my I, attitude anyway. I, no, I agree. You've got to, you know, comp- I mean, big compounds, areas, uh, reserves. Yeah. yeah. But. How do you incorporate your, you call yourself a witch, eh? Mm-hmm. I yeah, do. Yeah, I wasn't sure if, if that was. Yes, I claim the title witch. I'm okay. a witch. Yeah. So how do you, how do you, combine your beliefs and your practices as a witch in your work? Um, well, I think the thing, I don't keep the the the, the religion side out of the spirituality. Yeah. I mean, I teach that for anybody who wants to know. This are the Sabbaths. This is what it is. Right. The, you know, going into whether, you know, the feminine aspect with the male aspect and all that you learn. But to me, so that's, the, the religion part of the of being a witch. I, I'm Wiccan or I'm ceremonial right. or I am, you know, chaos magician. Or to be a witch to me is the practice of the craft, which means you are willing to take fate and change it. You are willing yeah. to l- drive your own boat, so to speak, not do something because you're told to do something too. Right. Um, and that's what I incorporate. And I teach people, they don't have to be a witch. They don't have to learn to be a witch, but you can still drive your own boat. Mm. And I do believe to, to practice the craft, you do have to have, uh, no, you have to, ha- you have to know right from wrong, funny terms, but you have to have a sense of integrity mm. of virtue, of ethics, of moral code. If you don't, you can get in trouble, mm-hmm. but if you do, you won't get in trouble. It's all intent, just like you brought up. If you have the bright intent, so you use the wrong color candles, so you use the wrong chant, so you do. But again, if your intent is to do this, so mm-hmm. long as you're harming none, mm-hmm. you know, you're not affecting anybody else, controlling anybody else, you create your world, we could do amazing things mm-hmm. and all with positive magic. I've never, ever once had a need, need to do anything negative, ever, yeah. once, yeah. to get and I've gotten amazing things, like miraculous things, like from complete physical healing to, you know, getting on MasterChef. I mean, ridiculous yeah. things and funny things and fabulous things from from positive magic. Yeah. So that's how I incorporate it. With I'm working with people, whether it's one, you know, clearing. I do a lot of house clearing. That's completely working elementally, and yeah. how I teach them to do it. Again, you could still, you know, be your Christian or be your atheist or be your Buddhist and. But let's work with that power of a tree, you know, and in, in my one on one counseling with people, you know, whether we're start with tarot cards or we're doing mediumship, it's it's giving them solutions to things because we're all about solutions. Right. You know, figuring it out what it is, you know, build the dam, go here, do that. Right. So that's I, I, I have a, a smallish Facebook group, at, uh, which the podcast started from, and I'm always telling my members, don't give your power away. You don't need to get somebody to come in and cleanse energies from your home. You can do it yourself. And so I show them and I tell them how to do it. I created documents that talk them step by step through it. And I say to them, you don't have to use sage. You don't have to. You can use clap your hands. You can bang potlids together. It's yeah. only ritual just is used to focus your intent. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't use very much sage. I don't. Yeah. It's too harsh for me. It's 
it's harsh. Yeah. I'll use more Palo Santo, but harsh gets rid of everything, the good and the bad, unless you really, really, really need it. And a lot of Native American Indians are thinking we are using way too much of it. And it's Mm -hmm. become. Yes. Yeah, it has. And so I try to say to people, look, there's so many things you can use. In New Zealand, we tend to use water or salt and water together. I use a lot of salt. I use a lot of water. And like you said, make noise, clap your hands, hit pots and pans together. If you have a bell, great. If you don't have a bell, hit pots and pans together. Your voice, your everything. Yeah, very cool. What have you got in the works for you at the moment, Patty? What's coming up for you? Uh, Lots of travel. I don't know when this is exactly airing, but this next week I'm getting ready to go to Michigan Paracon. I'm speaking and I'm doing a mediumship gallery. And that's like one of the biggest here in America, Paracons. You know, all the cool kids go up on all the shows and I'm doing that. The next week I'm doing an event in Tennessee, um, so a, a, a temple, a Japanese temple, shrine temple with this big dragon table. And I work with a lot of dragon energy. I can't oh, wait to get there. Um, I'm home for a week or two, maybe. And then <laughs> in October, which is busy month, you know, Samhain, yeah. Halloween. I've got two different events in Massachusetts, in Salem and Salem area. I've got New Orleans. I've got uh, Vulture City Paracon in Arizona. I've got Orange County. And again, these are live events. Orange County just decided to become virtual again. Um, I'm I'm sad, but the others are still all live. All my international stuff has been... um, pulled back till next year i was supposed to go to ireland this year that got pushed back to international travels hard Mm -hmm. so next year i've got a castle tour of ireland i've got romanian castles with my vampire Mm -hmm. friend father sebastian for bram stoker's 125th anniversary i've got something in the uk the festival unexplained so i've got a lot more international 2022 you know if we figure out this darn virus thing get it out of the way um, and then I'm actually doing something I can't, um, I'm really excited. My, my podcast, my podcast, the witching hour, we have a new home. It's called my paranormal network and I it's owned it. by it's the same people who do ghost adventures. So who produce ghost adventures. And now it's this all paranormal podcast, go to my paranormal.net and we're going to have contests and things. It's this hub coming together. So I'm so excited about that. I also have a new streaming service with two partners called paraflix.com, which is like Netflix, but all paranormal or spirituality and horror from music videos, paraflix.com. And I'm starting a new school called, uh, called University Magicus. I've been teaching for a lot, but the, one of the guys I teach for, I teach for several different people. Um, I'm now becoming one of the owners of the school with him because I had extra two minutes a day, I guess. I don't, <laughs> um, I've been filming a lot. I just filmed an episode of Basketball Wives here in the state. I just I filmed a new show called, I think it's called Spooky Summer, what a nice teen show. Um, and I've got something really fun with the TFIL guys, but I can't announce that yet, but people are going to love that. Mm, yeah, I wish I, I want to give a hint, but I can't we give it away. Um, <laughs> no, I can't. So just I you know, get off, go to my website, follow me, my social media, lots of cool things to announce. Again, lo- lots of new stuff coming out. Both you can just watch on TV or you can watch on YouTube or you could come to live. So what is your social media that you're on, Patty? I am on uh Facebook, I'm Patty Negri Psychic Medium, the one without a slash, the one with the blue check. They keep creating, there's Patty Negri Psychic slash uh-huh. Medium, but I, I don't know where that created. There's Patty dot Negri that came from, I don't know where that came from. I have a personal page, Patty Negri. You can follow that, but I don't, I can't have any more friends. I met my man, but Patty Negri Psychic Medium with the blue check. Instagram, I'm Patty dot Negri and Twitter. I'm at Patty Negri. Uh, now I'm at TikTok because I guess you got to do TikTok. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure that dang thing out. Uh, Patty Negri as well. P-A-T-T-I-N-E-G-R-I. But you can hub it all together at my website, pattynegri.com. Um, and you can get to all of them, including my YouTube page, where I do have a lot of educational videos. I teach a lot because like you, I like empowering people. Yes. Yeah. You absolutely. can do this. Yeah. You can do this.
And are you working on your book? I am working on my next book. I finally am. My book I have out now is called Old World Magic for the Modern World. Um, It's been out, wow, maybe a year and a half now, maybe two years now, but it's still a bestseller in like five countries. It's super simple. I honestly spent more time unwriting it than writing it on purpose. Where did I put it? Here it is. I spent more time unwriting it than writing it because I wrote it and I went, ugh words too many words how nobody wants to hear my words so i said i'm gonna un- halfway unwrite it so now you know our world we want something fast but and when i started 30 100 years ago <laughs> you know, i i would get all these big fancy books on magic or the craft or just self-help really and but if they were boring or big or overwhelming and i'd put them on the shelf and they look at i never pick up i pick up something really simple like by scott cunningham on like oh, natural he's magic. Great. oh he's the best i got yeah. to meet him once he passed in like 87 yeah. i got to meet him once take a class with him once again i've been doing this a long time um but i, I would devour his book mm. so that's not that it's a scott cunningham book but that's what i wanted something you do a chapter oh love magic oh moon magic oh right. how to clear your house by yourself. Oh, you know, oh, it's dinner for the dead. What's a dumb supper? Just, you know, simple, easy. You don't have to be, think you're gifted. Everybody is. You don't have to be a witch. You don't have to interfere. So, um, yeah, but now I'm finally going, oh yeah, there's, I would, I didn't know first I was going, I either want to do a young person book because young people are so much discovering something appropriate oh, yes. for mm-hmm. that preteen teen or I wanted to do a cookbook for people who don't really know how to cook, but want magical cooking. And I, either of those are still out there, but I think it's time for my next one of these because there's so much stuff people ask me about that's not. So my next version of this, I think, is next. Oh, I just exciting. have to find an extra two minutes a day <laughs> since I'm just building up with 48 other things. <laughs> gosh Patty, your energy is just all over the place you're amazing i don't know how you do it that what an exciting and amazing life you lead i'm a bit envious to be honest <laughs> no i mean that's crazy i'm i'm going crazy at three in the morning like, yeah. even talking about it. it's like this is my first minute of the day okay i better talk to my bed um i haven't talked to my husband yet this week hey, <laughs> Ah, and I have puppy school. So, but I love it. I create it again. We create our worlds and I, I obviously like this chaos and, and I like a challenge. So I like to create a challenge. My life was too stated. I mean, some people love that and some people want calm and peace Mm -hmm. and more power to them, but Mm -hmm. Not me. <laughs> You'd get bored. You'd get bored if you didn't have a challenge. Patty, it's just been a joy talking to you. I've just absolutely enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me on. You are a beautiful host, a wonderful host. It was truly a joy. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Patty. I want to thank Patty for her time. I really enjoyed my conversation with her. She's funny, full of energy and life, and just a lovely woman, delightful to talk with. It's not often until I go back to edit the interviews with guests that I discover little interesting tidbits that I did not notice when during the interviews, except in this case. As you may recall, in one part of our conversation, I mentioned to Patty that I could hear a male voice come over the mic when we were speaking. In this case, this is technically called a disembodied voice, not an EVP, an electronic voice phenomena, as I audibly heard this voice several times during our conversation. I copied them out and sent them off to Patty to listen to, but I've chosen to leave them in the interview to see how many of you spot them. Did you spot any of them? There are five to six different occasions where a voice interrupts our conversation. If you're a patron of our show, you can go to the patrons page and hear them all there. They are all very audible and very clear. (laughs) 
Our bumper music today was called Creepy Lullaby. If you enjoyed this podcast so you don't miss out on an episode, make sure you subscribe on your favourite podcasting platform. This podcast is available on all free podcasting platforms, including iHeartRadio and Pandora as well. Also, if you have Alexa, simply say these four words, Open Walking the Shadowlands, and Alexa will play our latest episode for you. If you enjoy our podcast, then please consider becoming a patron. Just head over to patreon.com forward slash mcc15 and sign up now. As a patron, you get early access to the podcast episodes and a special members only page on the podcast website that has bits that end up on the digital cutting board. And little extras like the disembodied voices that I heard during my conversation with Paddy. And you can download full written transcripts of each episode. And you get my absolute appreciation and gratitude. Patreon.com forward slash MCC15. What are you waiting for? Go and sign up now. Check out our Facebook page, Walking the Shadowlands, our Instagram feed of the same name and our Twitter feed at Shadowlands10, TikTok, under the name walking underscored the underscored Shadowlands. Like and follow for teasers of all our upcoming episodes. If you don't have a smartphone, then you can listen to the episodes from the podcast website, www.walkingtheshadowlands.com. For those hearing impaired, there's a full written transcript of each episode on the website, so you don't miss out at all. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your workmates about our show. Encourage them to listen and to subscribe also. The more, the merrier. Thanks for listening to this episode. Kakite ano oya koi. I'll see you again. Thanks for listening. 